continue practicing division using the array model. Um, here is our standard and our learning scale, which brings us to our learning goal, where we hope to find whole number of quotients and remainders with up to four digit dividends and one digit divisors using the following strategies. Equations, rectangular arrays, and area models. Specifically, rectangular arrays for right now. Here are the steps that we talked about in class. If you need to pause to rewrite these down, go ahead and do so before you continue. All right, let's try one together. 570 divided by 5. We know we need to start with drawing our array. Remember, we're going to break it into four different squares for each of our place values that we may or may not use. Remember that our thousands are on the very left, then our hundreds, then our tens, and then our ones. Um, we need to look at our problem and think it's 570, we are not going to use the thousands place, so remember so we don't get confused, we need to go ahead and cross it out. That being said, we can go ahead and get started. We need to look at our divisor, which is 5, and put it on the left side. Remember, it's the same um, as when we were doing the area model. We always put our divisor on the left side. Um, then we can go ahead and get started. We're putting our dividend in the hundreds place because it's 570. We're going to start out with that, and then we're going to ask ourselves, okay, how many times can 5 go into 5, which is our first number, remember? 5 can go into 5 one time. Remember, though, that because it's in the hundreds place, we need to add two zeros on the end of that so that it's accurate. We're then going to multiply 5 times 100, which gives me 500, and we're going to subtract. When I subtract 500 from 570, I am left with 70. Remember now that this number needs to go over here so we can continue working. We follow the same step. How many times can 5, our divisor, go into 7, our first number? Well, 5 can go into 7 once, so we put a 1 up here. But remember, because it's in the tens place, we need to add 1 and 0 on the end of that. We do our same step again. What is 10 times 5? 50. We write it down. We subtract. When I subtract 50 from 70, I'm left with 20. Remember, we need to bring that over. All right, we're going to ask ourselves now, how many times can 5 go into 2? Well, it cannot. So now we're going to look at our whole number that's left. We're going to look at 20, and we're going to ask ourselves, is that a fact that I know? And that should be. 5 times what gives me 20? And the answer to that is 4. Again, we're going to multiply. 4 times 5 gives me 20. I'm going to subtract. I get a 0. When I get that big old 0 at the end, I can now stop and add up my numbers at the top, giving me 114 as my quotient. Let's try one more. Again, let's start out by drawing our array. We're breaking it into four different squares. We are labeling the different place values. We are going to look at our dividend, and it's 540, so we're not going to use the thousand. So let's cross it out so we don't get confused. Let's look at our divisor, which is 4, and write it on the very left side like we know that we should. And let's go ahead and put our dividend in the hundreds place where it belongs. 540, that's where we're starting. Okay, we're going to ask ourselves, can, how many times can 4 go into 5? It goes in one time, but remember because it's in the hundreds place, we need to add on those two zeros to make it accurate. We're going to multiply 4 times 100, which gives me 400. I'm going to subtract. When I subtract, I'm left with 140. It needs to come on over. We're going to ask ourselves, okay, how many times can 4 go into 14? 4 can go into 14 three times without going over. So we're writing a 3. But remember, because it's in the tens place, we have to add a 0 on the end. We're now going to multiply, and we're going to say, okay, 4 times 30. What is 4 times 30? It's 120. 
Remember, we can pull out that basic fact of 3 times 4, which is 12, and then add on that 0. When I subtract, I am left with 20, and we're going to bring it on over. Remember now that we're going to ask ourselves, okay, can 4 go into 2? No, but we can look at the whole number of 20 and say, okay, how many times can 4 go into 20? And that is 5 times. And again, we're going to multiply 4 times 5, which gives me 20. I'm going to subtract. Again, when I get 0 at the end, I'm able to stop and add up my numbers at the top. And this would leave me with 135 as my quotient. You're going to try this one on your own. Make sure that you're drawing your array.